So maybe you're in your late teens, early 20s, or even into your 30s, and you're looking at your hairline, you're seeing it starting to recede a little bit, and you're wondering if you're going bald. Are you? Well, short answer, probably not. Uh, long answer, well, let's talk about it. So first of all, everybody, welcome to Jesse's Barbershop. My name is Jesse and I'm a professional hairstylist. I'm not just some young punk who started a YouTube channel because uh, he liked the look of his hair. This is what I do for a living. I've been a professional stylist for the past seven years now. Jeez. And over the past half year now or so, I've been working on this YouTube channel where I've been getting tons of questions. And one of the most common ones that I'm seeing is, am I going bald or are you going bald or how do I deal with a receding hairline or I'm 17, 18 and my hairline's receding, what do I do? Well, first of all, apparently what a receding hairline is, is different to a lot of different people. But for me, and if you're watching this video, uh, for the rest of it, we're going to be viewing this from my perspective. A receding hairline is any time your hairline is receding, as in going backwards, whether or not you're actually balding or I mean, some other factors that we're about to talk about, um, you know, anytime your hairline is going back, it's receding. Now, how you should go about approaching it is going to depend on what's causing that. So the first thing that I'd like to say addressing what I had said in the intro is if you're in your late teens or your early 20s or even into your mid 20s, you're probably not balding because what balding is, is what balding is or male pattern baldness is, is related to the life cycle of hair. Now hair has three major phases in its life cycle. The first of which is the, the first of which is the antigen phase where the hair is actively reproducing cells. And of course growing just like any other thing that grows in your body, it's producing cells and hair just gets longer out of the scalp. On average at any given time, about 90% of your hair is in this antigen phase. The next is the catagen phase, which is a very brief period of time. It's about two weeks where all cell division stops. So it stops reproducing and growing, but it's not dead enough to fall out. It's just kind of right in between. And the last is the telogen phase where your hair is technically dead. It is no longer growing. It disconnects from the root shaft and that's when it falls out. Now, if you're somebody who's balding, it is simply that cycle that's a little bit faster than normal. So it's less time in the antigen phase and more quickly reaches the telogen phase where the hair starts to fall out and eventually it can't keep up. The pace slows down and eventually you lose all your hair. But typically that doesn't happen till way later in life. But I think the first thing to address is why somebody that age might think that they're going bald. And in my opinion, it's really quite simple and it involves your skull. Now, as we know, our bones continue to develop until we're in our uh, early to late twenties. Now the skull itself is actually made up of seven or so, I'm not sure, seven different bones that are kind of sutured together, um, you know, right when you're born, it's not one solid mass, but as you age and as your skull develops, these suture lines kind of fuse together to make a hard skull. Now throughout this entire process, your skull is literally changing shape. Now, if you look right here, there's this big bone right in the front, which Google tells me is just called the frontal bone of your cranium. But if you notice, that's exactly where your hairline would sit. So as you age and this bone is changing shape and growing, oftentimes what people will find is that their hairline is getting pushed back and they're not losing hair. They're not thinning towards the hairline at all, but the hairline is just getting pushed back. And they're like, okay, well, I'm, am I balding? I don't feel like I'm losing hair. It's probably because your skull is literally changing shape. And that's why I think that, I mean, there's a lot of older guys who can rock like a high hairline. It actually looks good and it suits them because it's a very distinguished look. And in fact, this is just my theory, but this is why I think a lot of younger kids like in their preteens or even getting into their teenage years will wear their hair down in front of their face. I think what's happening from a subconscious biological perspective, uh, these young kids are looking up to their older peers and seeing these higher hairlines, larger foreheads, more developed frontal bones of their skulls. And then looking at their faces and seeing their not yet developed skulls and saying, I don't have that. I'm either going to hide it or there's somebody who has a naturally more developed frontal bone and they're seeing the rest of their face, like, you know, their cheekbones, which are you know more appropriate to their age. And they're being like, okay, well, something looks a little weird here. <laughs> something looks a little disproportionate. And here's the thing. I think everybody eventually grows into a higher hairline. Um, and that's why you'll see most older gentlemen with shorter kind of cutback hair because you eventually grow into that. But we got a lot more stuff to talk about. So that's just kind of the first thing that I'd like to say is, I mean, if you're under the age of 
30 and you feel like your hairline's getting pushed back, like just chill out a bit because you're not gonna know until your skull is actually fully developed. But that kind of brings me to the um, potential of actually balding. So the way that I'm going to suggest you look at this is there's three levels of balding, three levels of balding contribution. Uh, that doesn't make sense, but it will. The first of which is one thing that you cannot control about balding. And if you're balding and this is the case, that's, you know, tough. There's the next stage of things where you uh, have somewhat control over, and this isn't applicable to everybody. It's just in you know, case to case scenarios. And then there are things that everybody can do and should be doing to minimize the amount of balding or hair loss that happens. So the first and really only thing that you cannot control is your genetics. The same way that you're born with your hair color or your eye color, the rate at which your body prioritizes hair growth is mostly dependent upon your genetics. So, I mean, a good indicator is to, of course, look at your parents. So, I mean, if you have a bald dad, first of all, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to go bald, but keep in mind that if he's your dad, he's probably much older than you are, which means I feel like a lot of people kind of fall into that trap as they see their balding dad and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to go bald. But it's like, it's going to make more sense at that age. It's going to be more of a natural thing. Like if you were as bald as your dad is right now, that might be a problem. But realistically, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't start happening until way later anyways. But unfortunately, when it comes to your genetics, you don't have much control over that. Now, that second stage where you have some control and isn't necessarily the case for everybody, we'll save that for the end. We'll skip to the things that everybody can do. The things that nobody can control is the genetics, of course. The thing that everybody can control is how you treat your hair. When it comes to how you treat your hair, this comes to things like, I mean, your hair routine, how often you're washing it, how often you're um, putting product in it, how often you're blow drying it, um, the styling implements you use. The more aggressive you are with your hair, the more likely you are to cause damage to the follicle and the root shaft, which of course is not going to help keep your hair in your head. And the second of which, and this is something that is huge, is of course, as always, the product that you're using. I'm not going to drop any names, but if you're using products that are just super hard to get out of your hair and build up, anytime you brush your fingers through your hair, you can feel the weight and the buildup of the product that's adding extra weight to your hair. And anytime you move your head, it's literally just pulling your hair away from the root, which you want to keep it in for as long as you can. And then the last thing is that kind of in between spot, which not everybody has to deal with. But if this is something that is relevant to you, it would definitely help to get sorted. And that would be any sort of deficiencies. So the most common ones that I've seen are zinc or iron deficiencies. Like if you have very low iron in your blood, um, oftentimes that will relate to you um, having trouble maintaining your hair. And in fact, I had a client who just over the years kind of started looking a little bit sicker and she started losing a lot of her hair. So I suggested that she went and got her blood work done. You know, she checked everything and her iron levels were really low. So she started supplementing that. And then over the next year or so, we actually saw a lot of that hair density coming back. So that's just one example. And then in terms of just general health, I know there's a lot of products out there or tips that suggest you taking these supplements to, you know, help your hair and this like collagen, like, you know, whatever that may work. But I think in general, you should just be doing that kind of stuff anyways, because your body can only allocate so many resources to staying alive. And if you don't have enough of something, it's going to start allocating more resources to keeping your tissue alive and your organs going. And, you know, it's going to forego keeping the hair alive. But now we have houses to live in and staying warm is less of a priority, I think, biologically. So, I mean, that's the way I think you have to look at it. Realistically, I mean, we have houses. You, know, you might be going bald, but we have houses. So I hope that helps. And I think to just reiterate, if you're in your early 20s, late teens, chill out a bit, let your skull fully develop. Cause, cause even me, for example, I mean, I've got almost a perfect hairline, but I mean, my hairline used to kind of come down and my sides here were closer to the, you know, closer to my eyes, right? But I haven't been losing any hair around my sides, but my skull has kind of shifted backwards and kind of given it this more, you know, like squared off look back here. And to me, it's like, I mean, I don't, I don't care. I mean, I'm lucky enough to have the density that I have. I always felt I should be a little older than I am. So, you know, it hasn't really bothered me, but that's, that's the thing. Let your skull fully develop, then analyze. But in the meantime, you should be doing everything that you can to make sure that you keep your hair healthy and you aren't causing any unnecessary stress or tension or damage on your hair. But from personal experience, that's the best piece of advice is allow, allow your, allow your face and your skull and your personality to mature and develop into your higher hairline or whatever it is. And then if you're still worried about it, um, you know, 
So I think that's it guys. Hairstylist perspective on balding. So yeah, I hope that's given you a little bit of comfort. And hey, if you've been here before, I know you're already gonna like the video, but if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested in this kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell for notifications so you can know exactly when I come out with another video. Isn't that crazy? And for those of you who have been subscribing, of course, I really, I really appreciate that. Let's keep them coming because this is a lot of fun and we're closing in on that 10K mark. So I know we'll probably do some sort of giveaway and it's going to be something ridiculous too. Not like expensive ridiculous, but like literally just egregiously ridiculous. So thank you guys for watching and we'll hopefully see you in the next video. To subscribe or not to subscribe, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing, subscribe. To die, to sleep no more. And by a sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished to subscribe, to sleep. To sleep perchance to dream, aye, there's the rub. For in that subscription, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause.